what do you actually do? That's a common question that a lot of PhDs have, and I've certainly had a few over the last year and a half, because it can be a bit blurry what we do. So I thought in this video I'd talk about my work. So the title of my PhD at the moment is Deployable Structures for Space Applications. So a little bit of background. Uh, satellites need to be as light and as small as possible, or we're trying to do more with less. With rockets that we use to send our spacecraft up to space, our satellites are limited by the size of the rocket fairing, that's the nose, the very top part. The rest of it's basically fuel, and then you've got the rocket engines at the bottom. So this presents us with a problem. If we want to construct anything large in space, it firstly needs to be packed up and then deployed when you're up there. So here's an example of the material I work with. You can see it's just a coiled up tube. And what's great about these is that they're happy to be coiled up like this. And then you can open it up and you've got yourself a tube. So you can see how big it is. Uh, there are much larger ones, um, so you can get some that are five, six meters long. And here's another example. So this is just a different type of material. And it makes a really satisfying sound when you coil it up. So I'm just coiling it up now. So you see how it flattens and it's normally a bit See, there's an open slit there, and if I coil this up all the way, you'll hear a nice little, oh, there we go. So we know how these work, and we're pretty fine and happy with these. Uh, they've been used in space before to deploy something called a solar sail. Uh, think of a very thin metallic sheet, kind of like aluminium foil, that's huge, say the size of this room, but you can wrap it up using these materials into a little 10 centimeter by 10 centimeter cube. So a month or two after starting my PhD, um, speaking to my supervisor, looking into the literature, trying to find my feet, uh, came up with a helical antenna idea. So here's the problem. Because our satellites have to be small, their antennas aren't that great to send loads of data back down to Earth. So we thought, how about we try and make a deployable helical antenna, which can be packed up on Earth, deployed in space, and can send loads more data, allowing you to do more science or general communication. So another problem is that to figure out how a helix, a helical tube works and coils up like this, it's quite a big jump. So the first idea was, how do curved tubes work? So I've managed to make some of those recently, and here's an example. So it's a lot shorter at the moment, but you can see how it's still, still got, got a, an open slit, and it's curved in two directions. So in this direction, and this direction here. And it coils up, like so. What's fun is that I made some other ones. So here's another tube. Similar, the same material as that one, but it uncoils in a very funky way. So let's see if I can show this. So here we go. And do you know what it is yet? So this is a tube that's curved in the opposite direction. So you see how we've still got this curvature here, but this time it's in the opposite. And this coils up as well. This is happy to be coiled up. And it has a really funky shape just there. And here's a even more funky shape there. So the curved tubes, that's what I've been working on, understanding for a year, year and a half. It's what I presented the first stages of my model um, at the conference in San Diego. And at the moment, I'm just trying to write up a journal article. Uh, I'm trying to get some results for it, uh, for this paper. Um, so I can show you what that looks like to give you a little flavor. So here's the what we use. We use uh, LaTeX to write things up. So here's this code here. It produces text on this side. And at the moment, I'm just lacking an abstract. Uh, the model's there. The theory's there. Uh, at the moment, I'm tr these results are missing. So you can see these blank figures where data just needs to be dropped in there and a discussion and conclusion but it shouldn't take me more than 
a week or two for the first draft and then my supervisor will read that over tell me what I need to change and I'm gonna expect a lot a lot to change <laughs> then tomorrow which is the 20th of May Friday hopefully me and my office mate over there will be getting an email notification saying that our abstract was accepted to a conference uh, that's the French one in Toulouse later this year in late September they'll be looking at the curve tubes but it'll have a slightly different fo different focus um, so hopefully they accept that find out tomorrow so that's the curve stuff that's happening at the moment it's starting to close down this year um, then um, I've started about a week ago uh, looking at how the helical tube behaves so I've started my model on that um, for about a week I've been looking at that and it looks promising it's a bit tricky there's a lot of new maths in there but it's it's quite interesting it's quite fun to work on the results at the moment of the of the model like the first stage um, it's looking good hopefully that basically represents the beginning of the end of my research I'm hoping that the final thesis uh, at the moment anyway who knows what might happen if some new research gets published that destroys my research and leaves me laying on the ground broken in pieces but about halfway through uh, about six weeks ago, I felt like I had to start thinking about what my final thesis was going to be like, the chapters, what might go into the chapters, uh, the story, how I might present three years of work. Um, it sort of felt like I was I was going down, starting to go down a little slope, the the final half of the PhD, even though I'm working a lot more now than I used to in the first half. Uh, I can already start to see the end, which might be a little bit dangerous, um, but it's only getting more exciting. So that's a little overview of what my work's about. Uh, I'd love to hear what you've got to say. Um, I don't mind if you're a PhD or not, but I'd like to know what you're up to. It's always interesting to find out what people are working on, and stick a comment below.